Today, we're going to talk about checksums, what they are, how they're useful, and how you can use them in your programs. Good morning, everyone. Today's topic is corruption, not political corruption, but message corruption, because anytime that you are using one of your programs, if you're sending a message from one machine to another, usually across a wire or over the air, you know, something like Wi-Fi, there's always a chance that it's going to get messed up along the way. And there are some different things that we can do to try to detect that corruption. And one of those is checksums. So that's what I want to talk about today. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, C programming. I'm going to show you an example of how we compute a checksum in C. Now, this video is made possible and way better by all of you, especially those that support the channel through Patreon and through buying merch. Patreon is where you can get access to the source code from all my videos. Also, I do hold a monthly office hour, which you can also get access to through Patreon if you want to chat really about anything. So anyway, thank you for all the support. Now back to checksums. Okay, so the scenario we're talking about is this. Let's say I'm trying to send a message from my machine to another machine. I send a series of bits. I mean, it's characters. We think of it as characters, but it's really just ones and zeros. And there's a chance that some of those bits get corrupted. You know, one becomes a zero, zero becomes a one along the way. Now, the question for today is really, how does the person who received it know that it was corrupted? How do they know that the corrupted version isn't what I actually sent? And that's where checksums come in. Also, I want to point out today that what we're talking about today is just the beginning. So checksums are just kind of step one in a series of ideas that help us detect corruption, detect problems, whether malicious or by accident. So let me know down in the description if you want me to dig a little bit deeper into this topic. There's definitely a lot more to say than what we're going to cover today. But anyway, back to our topic, we're talking about checksums. And the idea with a checksum is simple. We're going to compute some value based on the bits of our message. And the idea is that that gives us a summary, some kind of way to represent, it's like a hash way to represent that message in a way that we can then detect when we receive it, whether it all makes sense. But let's make things a little more concrete. Let's take a look at some code. For today's video, I want to start with this simple hello world type program, and we're going to move from there. We do have a make file, pretty standard make file, similar to just about anything you've seen on any of my other videos. And for today, I'm actually not going to send anything over the air uh, for a couple of reasons. One is time, and the other is because I want to be able to control the corruption. And if I actually sent Wi-Fi packets, you know, I may have corruption or I may not, and we could try for a long time without getting any. And so this is just going to be easier. It's going to be more controlled. But let's start. We've got a message right here that I have created. It's just a string series of characters. It could be anything. This is going to work for now. And I'm printing it out. I'm printing out my message down here. And we'll just just to make sure that everything's working beforehand, we can run it and you can see, OK, we get our message. That's great. Now, what I'd like to do today is to have some way that we can corrupt our message. So maybe we can get something like this and have a function that is called something like corrupt message. We'll pass in our message and we will pass in the number of bits that we want to corrupt. So let's uh, let's start with one and then just so let's just because that way we can see kind of before and after. Let's say before the message and after the message. OK, so this is going to basically corrupt my message and then we'll print it out and you'll be able to see how it corrupts it. Also, um, I think I'm going to duplicate the string here. So let's also just before I forget, let's free our C message, our corrupted message. We don't need to free our original message because it's not allocated on the heap. OK, so this is the basic structure that I want to play with today. So now let's go up and let's actually look at how we would try to corrupt some bits. And so for this, let's just make a function that's going to return a character pointer. We're going to call it corrupt message and it's going to take in a const character pointer called message and an integer, which is the number of bits. And the whole idea of this function is I want to flip a bunch of random bits, you know, maybe just one may not be a bunch. But uh, anyway, yeah, so we're going to come in here. Let's first duplicate our string. We'll call this result and call str dupe. That's just going to duplicate the string and we'll pass in message. And this is eventually what we're going to return. So it's going to look just like our original message, except here we need to put some corruption. And if you're wondering why I'm duplicating the string here, one of the reasons I'm duplicating it is because I don't know if the memory where this is stored is actually writable. And so I could run into problems if I try to update it, if I try to change it. And you know that might actually be an interesting topic for a future video, but that's not what we're talking about today. So then basically what I'm going to do is take a, let's make a for loop here. We'll start at zero and go to num bits. So this is the number of bits we're going to mess with. 
And then each time through this loop, what I'm gonna do is I want to pick a random byte and we'll just call rand. We could use other random number generators. I've talked about you know, how rand isn't necessarily the best random number generator in the world, but it will work for today. And we will mod it by the string length of our message. So this is essentially going to pick some value from zero to the length of the string minus one. So it's basically just randomly picking one of the bytes in my message. And then we're also gonna pick a random bit in that byte. And so that's gonna be rand mod eight. So that'll pick a number between zero and seven. Okay, now that we have our random byte and our random bit, then all I have to do here is say result our byte. So that's the byte we want. And then all I'm going to do is XOR it with one left shifted by our bit. Okay, now what's going on here? So we're using XOR. If you haven't seen anything about XOR, maybe you wanna check out my previous video on XOR, it was a few weeks ago. It's a super cool operator. Here, all I'm using it to do is to flip a bit. If this seems strange at all, think of it this way. If I XOR a bit with one, it flips. Okay, so one XOR with one is gonna be zero and zero XOR with one is gonna be one, right? So no matter what I XOR with one, it's going to flip the bit to the other value. So in this case, all I'm doing Doing is I'm taking one, I'm shifting it left, the number of bits that I want, that's my, my R bit value. So if I'm trying to flip bit two, I'm gonna shift it over two places to the left. And then when I XOR this with my existing value, it just flips the bit that I want. And then in this function, because we are in a loop, we're just gonna do this over and over again. And note that the way this code currently works, I may be flipping the same bit twice. That's gonna be okay for this demonstration. I could make changes so that it makes sure that it never flips the same position twice, but you know, for now, let's not worry about that. The point is this should work. We should be able to come down here now and call it. Let's see, yeah, okay. So here we look at our message and it didn't change anything and that's because I forgot to come up here and print out the corrupted message. So let's try this again. And here you do see that we have one byte that was corrupted. Now Rich Purnell is now Pupnell or whatever. And of course we run this over and over again. It's gonna do it the same way because I forgot to seed my random number generator. So let's take care of that really quick. We'll just use it with time. So now we can then run this and you can see, yeah, so we're ending up with different forms of corruption here. So now the S was corrupted. And of course, if we wanna take this to a to another extreme, we could basically say like, let's say we don't just want one, we want you know 10 bits to be corrupted, then we can come in here and now you're gonna see we're getting all sorts of messed up in our, you know, our message is looking totally different. One thing that is really interesting you'll notice is that a lot of times when you corrupt one bit, it just changes the case. It changes lowercase to uppercase, uppercase to lowercase. That's an interesting product of the way that ASCII and UTF-8 actually work. I'll let you play around with that in your own time, but it is kind of cool. But the point for today is if I was on the receiving end of this message, other than the fact that it doesn't really look like nice English, how do I know that that's not what you meant to say? And so let's look at how we could compute a checksum for this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is we'll come up here and let's just make another function here. Uh, I'm going to return just a single character or a single byte. That's gonna be my checksum value. And let's, let's make it unsigned character and we'll call this checksum one because we're gonna do a couple of these and then pass in our message and the length of the message that we want to compute it on. And then let's make a, another a result like we did before. And we'll start it out as zero. And then we'll just come down here and have a for loop that goes from zero to the length, or I guess just under the length and I plus plus. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to add up the values of our bytes. So this will be message I. Also, let's make this const just because it's a good idea. And then we'll come down here and return result. Okay, so all this is doing is it's going through my message one character at a time and just adding them all up. And if it's a long message, this is definitely gonna overflow unless all of these things are zero. But the point is, is that this result should be a product, should be a sum of all of the bytes that I'm sending and we should be able to verify that with our corrupted message after the fact. So let's come down here and let's just say our before message. Let's add a tab character here. And I'm gonna print it in hex just cause why not? And we'll print out, let's do check some one. Okay, so that's gonna work there. And then 
Let's just come down here and replace that. And so now it's going to compute our checksum for our original message and also for our corrupted message. And we can take a look and just see what we're going to run into, what we're gonna see. Now, if we run it, you can see, okay, well, the original one is four zero and this one is seven C. That's not really what we want. Uh, let me add my tab character in here because that I forgot to copy that over just to make things a little bit easier. Now, one thing you notice is sometimes it cuts short. That's just because the corruption produces a zero byte in there, which terminates the string early. But the point is that you see we have very different checksums. And so if I send Rich Purnell is a steely-eyed miss missile man and the value four zero, then you can compute this same value on the me receipt message. And if it doesn't match four zero, then you know there's something wrong. Now, one thing that is interesting about this is let's say that I, let's say that I go with two. So two bits of corruption. There's always the possibility and if I run this long enough, it's going to become a probability. You know, at some point I am going to, if I run this long enough right here, I'm going to get an example where I corrupted two bits. So I corrupted this Y and I added this square bracket here at the end. And so basically what this resulted in is when I computed the checksum, I basically ended up with 4040. So I ended up with exactly the same thing, okay? So that is one of the weaknesses of checksums is they're really good if you get one bit wrong, but it's not hard to end up with a case where you get two bits wrong to cancel each other out and your sum ends up being exactly the same. Okay, so one more thing because so adding things up is a common way to do checksums. Uh, let's just look at one more example and that is going to be, we'll call this checksum two. And for this, we're just going to use XOR, which is just another way to, to combine things. So now let's come down and just look at that really quick. So here, what I'm gonna do is just add a, another number to each of these to print them out. And this one's gonna be, let's see, C message, C message, and we'll do checksum two, checksum two, message and message. Okay, great. And then I'm gonna come in here and add another percent X to each of these. So this is just gonna add a separate extra checksum. Okay, so now well, you can just run this again. And okay, so you can see now we have two checksums and they're not always the same and they may or may not get confused in the same way. But the point is, is that these are two different ways that we can compute a checksum. And you do notice like right here, the XOR checksum ended up with a collision. The addition checksum did not. So at least in that case, we'd rather have the addition one, but we may get different results as we go through. You know, we may very easily end up with an example that flips the other way. If I run this long enough, and if the fact that you're getting these collisions is a problem, then there are other options. And these are, like I mentioned before, these are things that we could dig in a little further on a future video, things like CRCs. And then if you're worried about like maliciously modifying messages, we could also look at cryptographic hashes, all different ways, some that are more complicated than others, some are more computationally intensive than others. But today I just wanted to talk about checksums. It's a really easy and very useful way to do an easy first check on your data to check to see if it's valid. So I hope that was useful. I hope this is helpful and I hope you learned something new. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss future videos and until next week, I will see you later.